The Final Cut Pro 10.0.3 update, released on January 31, 2012, included a set of additional controls in both the keyer effect and the luma keyer effect. While the controls available before the 10.0.3 update are all you need for most keying situations, including the one used in this tutorial, the additional controls give you more flexibility for adjusting your key in more difficult keying situations. In this lesson, we'll explore the new controls and learn how to apply them. Go to the project library and open the Appendix Start project. This project contains three clips on the primary storyline and two connected background clips. The clips are organized from the easiest to key to the most difficult. Select the first clip of the seated woman with the wine glass. Notice how the background is bright and very evenly lit, and how you don't see much of any spill on the subject because she's located a good distance from the green wall. In the Effects browser, in the Keying category, hover the pointer over the keyer effect to see a preview in the thumbnail and in the viewer. It already looks pretty darn good. Double-click the effect to apply it to the clip. Skim the clip in the timeline. Even the wine glass is nicely keyed. Of course, the reflections of the studio lights are a dead giveaway that this clip was not shot outside, but the key looks great. In the inspector, open the keyer effect if necessary. Select the matte view and skim the clip to check the matte. It's a good solid white throughout the shot and there's nice soft hair detail. Switch back to the composite view. Drag the spill level slider to the left. You can now see the green spill on the talent's hair. Undo, then drag the spill level slider to the right. The talent's hair becomes tinted magenta as too much is being added to counteract the green. Undo that. So with this well-lit shot, the automatic keyer has created a great key with just the right amount of spill suppression and you really don't need to do anything to adjust it. The only thing you may want to do with this shot is some color correction to make the woman better match the background. Show the color board for correction one and in the exposure pane, bring down the shadows a little and bring up the highlights. In the color pane, drive the global puck to add a little warmth to the shot. By the way, you can now navigate to each pane in the color board by pressing Control tab to rotate through them or hold down Control command and tap C for the color pane, S for the saturation pane, or E for the exposure pane. You can also drag in the value fields to adjust the values. Okay, let's move to the next clip. Return to the video inspector and then select the clip of the woman in the red sweater holding the glass of water. Notice how this green screen is darker than the one in the first clip. It's also not lit as evenly and it has a vertical seam near the middle. Double-click the keyer effect to apply it to the selected clip. Skim the clip and park the playhead on a frame where the woman's hair is spread out. This default automatic key also looks incredibly good, a testament to the power of the keyer effect. Open the keyer effect in the inspector if necessary. Once again, switch to the matte view and skim the clip. Again, we see a nice solid white matte with good detail. Switch back to the composite view. Below the invert checkbox are a set of advanced controls that were added to the Final Cut Pro 10.0.3 update. Color selection, matte tools, spill suppression, and light wrap. You should approach them in the order that they are presented from the top down. Now 90% of the time you probably won't need to use these tools, but for a difficult key they can come in handy. I suggest that you don't resort to them until you've done the best that you can with all the tools above the invert checkbox. You can use these advanced tools in three different scenarios. First, to adjust the automatic key that the effect created. Second, to adjust a key that you created with the sample color and edge tools. Third, to create a completely manual key. We'll look at an example of each scenario using this second clip. Let's start by examining the Color Selection section. Click the Disclosure Triangle for Color Selection to reveal the tools it contains. There are Graph Options, a Chroma Wheel, a Lumograph, 
sliders for chroma and luma roll-off, and a fixed video checkbox. Now currently, we haven't adjusted the keyer effect at all. The strength slider is at 100%, which means that we are seeing the result of the automatic color sampling. The keyer effect combines two different mats to create the key, a core mat and an edge mat. The chroma wheel in the color selection section provides a visual representation of these two mats. The overall wheel represents color values for both hue and saturation. As you go around the wheel, the hue changes. As you move out from the center of the wheel, saturation increases. The large pie slice is called the outer graph, and it indicates the hue and saturation values that are being used to create the edge mat for the key. The small box inside the outer graph is called the inner graph, and it represents the hue and saturation values being used to create the core mat for the key. If you move the pointer over the edges of the outer graph, they highlight and the pointer icon changes to indicate that you can adjust this graph. Notice that if you move outside the wheel, the round edge of the outer graph highlights as well. If you move the pointer over the inner graph, nothing highlights and the pointer icon does not change. This is because the graph mode above the chroma wheel is set by default to scrub boxes. In this mode, you can only adjust the edge mat for the key, which is usually what you're most interested in anyway. Switching the graph mode to manual will let you adjust the core mat in both the chroma wheel and the lumograph, which we'll do a little later.